All right, welcome my friends. This is construction day 10, going into the double digits. And where we left things off is we finished off the walls and we moved the door over and we added some uh, two inch plywood, two inch, half inch plywood on the sides. Uh, and then we left that gap up above so that we can tie it in. So the plan today is to put the trusses up on the roof on that seven degree pitch and then put the plywood on top. And then we're gonna then add the rest of the plywood along the sides to tie it in. So we've chosen to uh, yeah, tie it in that way, I guess. So let's see how far we can get this project moving today. And again, thank you so much for joining us as we're moving this forward. So we're attempting to put a plumb line. So what we've done is we've attached five of, the, five of these uh, two by fours. So we've tied it on one end and then we're gonna tie it on the other end. And these middle three should always be touching this line. That's how you make sure that the wall doesn't bow out or in as we're tying in the roof trusses. Remove this cross piece and the wall is allowed to bow up a little bit and then we slowly bring it in and when it just touches then we tie this again. So now that they're all lined up we can take it off, take that line off and then remove the small blocks and we don't need to do it on the other side because we're going to cut these rafters all at the same length and that will to help us to pull this wall in or push this wall out because they're all going to be the same size and we're basing it on this wall that has been plumbed. All right, so that last piece is stuck there. Have to do a little, a little jogging at the end, but that's uh, about making it fit, making it flush. And the other side, uh, it's poking up a bit, but that's okay because the ply wouldn't be covering that. So now, we're marking these at 16 inches, and this is where each of the rafters will go. And we'll start on this end. Now to make the very first truss. So to make this, we know seven degrees is the cut. First we start by cutting off seven degree pie slice. And then we're gonna remove that much, which is gonna sit on the top plate on this side. All right, so this is the fascia, and then this is going to be our truss. So this line, this top line here, is gonna come and start on this side, mm -hmm. and this will rest on the top plate. So this yeah. is three and a half inches yeah. that's gonna rest on that top plate. So as we cut this in, and here, tie it together. It should sit nice and snug. <clears throat> so here's the example. Top plate, truss, fascia board. And on this end, we've cut that same seven degree slice. So we just make sure that it's two inches and 90 degrees from the seven degree cut. And the whole thing is cut at seven degrees, which will sit on this end. So then now that we have our top piece, we simply stencil up with the next piece, so on and so forth until we cut them all up. These two by eights for the rafters. All right, so here we are with the very first piece. So 
we put space an uh, inch and a half for the fascia board and we make sure that it's flush on this side and enough room for the fascia board to be flush. I'm gonna toenail it right in here and then toenail it on the side and then we the second piece we're gonna toenail that one as well all along the end and then put the fascia board against it and then be able to tack it. To make sure that we have actually 14 and a half inches between each of these because they're at every 16 inch is we have this small 2x4 that we've cut at 14 and a half. And so when we bring it in snug, we tie it in there, we know it's gonna be the exact distance that we need. So as you can see here, we're putting on the uh, two by eight fascia board. And you can see how we've cut it at that same seven degree angle. You can see that it's at seven degree angle, so it matches perfectly with this two by eight uh, fascia board at the end. So now we're just lining them up, make sure that these are 90 degrees and tackling them the whole way through. I don't know, something that's kind of useful for me. So up here, I really have just my two hands. And because the wood is twisting, it's really tough to twist it and hold it there and know that it's, because right now it's not 45. So what I'm doing is just twisting it so that it is flush. Then I mark it with a pencil. When I let go, it goes back. And then as I'm nailing, I can just hold it with this line that I made. And then it keeps it exactly where it needs to be. I mean like here, that's how twisted it is. I'm at a junction, so I need like three hands, so I'll pull it to make my mark, and then I'll be able to pull it knowing that it is flush. So as we prep for the uh, plywood to be put on top, we're just gonna temporarily put a two by four here and make sure that our uh, trusses are exactly where they need to be, because as you know, wood has a tendency to curve and bow and be hockey sticks. So this will just help us make sure that uh, when we nail the lines down, that they're gonna be straight and where we expect them to be. 
All right, everybody. So here we are at the end of, what did I say, day 10? Day nine, day 10, <laughs> something like that. All right, so we have all of our trusses in and we have our fascia board. And on the other side, we have a nice pretty cut of seven degrees. Uh, here we don't particularly need it because uh, they are edging up, so it's perfect. So I am pretty pleased to have this roof on. That's one more step. And next construction day is gonna be putting plywood on top of this and then adding the finishing plywood that's needed down there. So let's, uh, man, I really enjoy being this high. Rock climbing came in use for this quite a bit. Uh, amazing. All right, guys. So thank you again for following along. And I always enjoy talking to you guys and the questions that you have. Um, so please do continue with those and tell me about the projects that you're working on. All right. God bless.